We're currently in a series right now called Staying Strong. Um, and we've had a real blessing in the last few weeks. This is part four. So if you haven't heard part one, part two, part three, I encourage you after this um, to go and check out those messages because um, it's something that I believe right now is perfect for this season. Yeah, this season we could easily be deflated or we might be in our own little world and be on cloud nine right now. But right now, I think we need to be balanced. We need to be people who are excited and hopeful at the same time we recognize that there are some people hurting around us right now. And we need to be sensitive to that. So maybe if you're watching, um, you're in a situation right now or you're in a circumstance that you wouldn't really want to choose to be in. I just want to encourage you that we're praying for you. And if you have any prayer requests, you can go to our website and just hit the prayer, um, pray for you. Give us your request because we are going to continue to pray with you and want to agree that yet God is greater and that we are moving forward and that we are not afraid because we are led by the promise. And this morning, just to recap a little bit, this series on staying strong, um, the whole purpose of this series is that how we can learn to strengthen ourselves in the Lord so that regardless of what type of um, place we're in, where we find ourselves, that we can remain strong in the valley and we can remain strong even when we're on the mountain. And between those two contrasts, we can remain balanced and continue to move forward as we know how to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. And we believe the Bible is filled with all sorts of tools and principles that we can apply. And as we apply them, we can just yeah, mature our faith. Why? So that we can represent Jesus well uh, with a life of victory. And I don't know if there's anything better That when you meet someone and they just have joy over them, when you meet someone and they just stand out because they have, I believe, the joy of the Lord because they're walking in victory. And this morning, I want to extend the series a little bit. We're going to talk about um, another part, but just before I do, the key verse for this series comes from 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30, verse 6. And, and David, um, he, he's the guy that we're talking about right now. He finds himself cornered. He's in a bad situation. His own team want to overthrow him. They want to kill him. And He's in this adversity and yet this is how David strengthened himself. So verse 6 of that chapter, 1 Samuel 30 says this, Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And basically David got himself out of a really negative situation. He got himself up out of that situation by strengthening himself in the Lord. And this morning, church, I hope you are staying strong. I hope you've been loving what we've heard so far. The first week was about guarding your heart. And we believe that if you can guard your heart, then all the issues of life that flow out of it will come out the way that God has designed you to. And week two was all about, yeah, this thankfulness, having a heart of gratitude where you can just give praise and give praise and you don't let life dictate what comes out of your mouth. You dictate life through what comes out of your mouth. That's what we talked about, Thanksgiving. And I'm I'm hearing heaps of good um, reports from from two weeks ago, part two. But in particular, last week, part three. Pastor Peter, he killed it. He talked about WWJD, not what Jordan will do. What would Jesus do? Our King, our Savior in every circumstance. If you don't know what to do and you, you don't know how to stay strong, think, what would Jesus do in this situation? I was blessed and I hope you were too. And today I want to extend it. And just before I do, I don't want you to think we're going to um, go through every single principle in the Bible. We can't. Um, we'll go, this series would go for till 2040. Um, but we're just going to continue for a few more weeks and the, and the tools, the keys that we're sharing with you. Yeah, this isn't some long exhaustive list, but we're choosing things that we apply in our lives. And today I've got another one that has really blessed me. And I believe, and I know actually this is going to bless you at home. And this key is really relevant right now. And I made a point a few weeks ago that if you want to really harness these keys, if you want them to now become a part of who you are, you want to cultivate a lifestyle with these keys, you have to, yeah, make it personal. Don't just copy paste what I tell you today. I want you to get alone and and take these tools and start to, yeah, work on them with the Lord. Also, you've got to be consistent. Yeah, if you just, oh, I'm going to try to be thankful. I'm going to try to ask, what would Jesus do? Once, that's not going to work. You've got to be consistent. It's going to take some discipline. It will cost a little bit, but you know what? Yeah, God's going to reward you as you stay consistent. And the last one is what, don't wait till you get it all right to start. Start now. Yeah, start now. Think big, but start today. Don't, don't put this off to tomorrow. So I believe what I'm going to share with you is something that the Lord has shared with me. Um, and I want you to start this today. And I think... Um, Different seasons that we go through require different keys, um, different tools to be used. But this tool that I'm going to share today doesn't have a season on it. It's for now, it's for tomorrow, and it was for yesterday. 
the, the tool that I believe I'm going to share with you today is something that I believe we all know we should practice, but sometimes we don't. It's a tool that if we can get it right and just be consistent, it will change every single part of our lives. So I hope you this morning just lean in. Um, if you're going to take notes, take notes and make sure you don't um, just let someone distract you because I believe God wants to share something with you this morning that will just, again, better your life so that other people can be benefited while you are strong. So this morning, I want to talk about how we can yeah, build a personal history with God, how we can spend time with God alone in solitude and that union, being alone with Jesus, will transform your life. Amen. I want to talk about getting alone with God. So just before I do, I just want to define for us what prayer is, because some of us have mixed emotions of what is prayer. Um, is, it, is it burning candles? Is it chanting and dancing? I just want to read a definition that I got of what prayer is. It says this, prayer is communication between man and God. It's a two-way relationship in which man should not only talk to God, but also listen to Him. And this morning, I'm going to be talking about how we can get alone with God and create and build a personal history with God, not just where we talk to God, but He talks to us. Turn to someone and say, get alone with God. Put it in the chat. Get alone with God. Um, for those who don't know, my, myself and my beautiful wife, Grace, we have got two beautiful kids at home. We've got Bella, who's about eight months, um, and we've got our son, Isaiah. He's two. And if anyone has kids or you've had kids before, you know that in your house, while well, you've got two kids under three, there's not a lot of solitude going on at home. Uh, there's not a lot of quiet time. There's not a lot of um, just free spaces in the day. So I really long to get alone. I long to, uh, I've got to make space to get alone with God. But my son, he, he hates being alone. So not only is he running around and he's just a happy kid and he wants to show me everything. Hey, Dada, look at this and Dada, look at that. I'm loving it. But literally, he can't be alone. I put him on the floor, give him a toy. doesn't matter what toy it is. I put, give him the toy, I run off and I look and straight away, he sees I'm not there and he runs and he wants to be with me. And it's cool and we've had some good moments and I love it. I genuinely do. But the other day, I'm in the bathroom and I'm, and I'm doing my thing and he comes in, Dada, surprise. And I'm like, oh, hey, buddy. And he comes in and, and he, he gets right up in your grill, no social distancing with him. He doesn't get it. And he's up in my grill and I'm like, look, I'm busy right now. And he wants to show me everything. He's, he's touching everything. He's grabbing my wife's straightener and he's wielding it like a sword. And, and I'm there trying to navigate all this. And I'm basically teaching him how to and how to use the toilet. Meanwhile, he just stays by my side the whole time because he literally doesn't like to be alone. He's always got to be with people. And it's a great thing right now because he obviously he thinks people are a priority and he wants to be around it and I love it. And God's going to use him in a special way. However, I think some of us are a lot like my son where we can't um, get alone. We don't like being alone. We want to be with people all the time. And right now through um, this isolation period, that's been highlighted. People are like ranting, complaining. Oh, I can't wait for this to be over. Um, however, I'm kind of on a different disposition. I love being alone. Like I said, two kids, any chance I get, I jump on it. But if we're honest, as a culture, uh, Western people, we hate being alone. We can't actually do it. And maybe you're listening and you're like, I can be alone. I love my own company. I disagree. Um, unless you're one of the yeah, 10% of the population, I think most people hate being alone. And maybe you think, oh, I like being alone. I go on the beach. But Forget your phone, forget your social platforms, forget um, yeah, having a friend beside you or, or necessarily having people around you. When I talk about getting alone, I'm talking about alone. Uh, no friends, just you, yourself and God. And I think the same way we struggle to be alone, just in general, if we transfer that to our life with God, if we transfer that to our relationship, yeah, with, our, with Jesus. I think sometimes that hinders us from actually getting alone with God. We're so used to people. We're so used to technology. We're so used to the gram and Snapchat and every single TikTok that we just can't get alone. We, we, don't, we actually feel um, like uh, unsatisfied or we feel almost nervous to be in a room or in a space with just ourselves. And I want to talk into that a little bit today because I am so convinced that if we can't get alone, that we're going to miss out on so much. Obviously, we're created for community. But before, yeah, we, we, Adam, the first man in the Bible, before he got his community from God, he was alone with God first. And I believe in order for us to be great influence, to be great in our community, we have to first know how to be alone with God. 
And not only are we just meant to be alone with God, of course, it's got to lead to community. However, today, this morning, I want to just pause on that fact. We need to know how to get alone. And maybe that's something difficult to you, that's confronting. I want to challenge you to think about it. What stops you from being alone? Um, do you, can't you be alone with God because God is calling you to be alone with Him? He wants to spend time with you. He wants you to hear His voice. He wants you to feel His embrace. And this morning, maybe this is new to you, but God actually wants you to come alone with Him. He wants to create a personal history with you. And I think it's so powerful. And I see this right in our key passage. So let's go back to where we see David. He's greatly distressed. He, let's see how he actually strengthens himself in the Lord. So back to verse 6. Just jump with me here. It says this. It says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. They're real upset. They've lost their children. and They want to now kill David. But David strengthen himself in the Lord. Verse 7 tells us, verse 7, 8 tells how he did it. Then David said to Abath the priest, Abimelech's son, please bring me the ephod uh, here to me. And Abitha brought that ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. This is God talking to David. Pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. In this passage, we see that David went and took the, the priestly garment. He got alone and he, got, he went away from the crowd. He went away from the soldiers and he inquired of the Lord. He asked the question. He spent time stopping, pausing and asking God that question, what do I do in this situation? And when he got alone with God, then the answer came. He strengthened himself in the Lord by getting alone, getting away from the distraction, getting away from the noise and connecting himself to his God. This morning, it is so important we understand the power the privilege yeah, and our opportunity to get alone with God. It's not a weird thing. It's not some Eastern um, meditation thing. This is a biblical thing. This is something that God has for you. And I believe the best place to encounter God is when you get alone with Him. That's when you can truly encounter Him. And I believe this morning, um, this is going to be really clear to us. And Although we can look at David, I could take you to Noah, I could take you to Abraham and Moses, and we could talk about person after person, women and men who got alone with God and they were strengthened in the Lord. But I want to just go straight to the main point this morning. Let's go to Jesus. Yeah, He's our king. He's our main point. Turn to someone or put it in the chat and say, I'm so used to people being here. I say, turn to someone. But turn to the chat and start typing Jesus, our example. Jesus, our example. If you're taking notes, Jesus, our example. Now, he's both, yeah, if you don't know much about Jesus, let me give you a quick little preview. He's, he's both man, just like me and you. He feels like we feel. He, he lives the way we live. But yet he's also God, fully God, fully man. And Jesus is the perfect example of what it looks like to be in right relationship with God. And although he was God, he didn't deny praying. Although he was God, I want to show you how often he got alone. And Luke in particular, of all the Gospels, there's four Gospels, and Luke in particular highlights this fact a lot in his Gospel. I want to read a few scriptures really fast, and I want to point out to you how often Jesus got alone. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. I hope you're tracking with me today, and I hope you are staying strong. All right, Luke 4, verse 1. We're going to go quick, so run. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus gets baptized, and the first thing he does is he goes away into the wilderness. Yeah? Gets baptized and goes into the wilderness. Let's check this out for a second. Let's say on this week someone gets baptized. Then they say, you know what? I'm going to the middle of Victoria. It's rural. I'm going by myself for 40 days. If they said that to you, you would probably grab them. You would call their mother. You would call their friends and family say, this guy's lost it. He's, he's going to go into the bush. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's just been baptized. But that's what Jesus did. He got alone. He didn't run to the community first. First, he went to God. And it was in this time where something powerful happened. He encountered God and he came out powerful. We're going to see that every time he gets alone, something powerful happens when he comes out of it. Yeah, Take note. The next one is in Luke chapter 5. Yes, yeah, the next chapter, it says, But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. And this is happening among so many miracles. He's healing people. He's preaching to the multitudes. And then it says, And he would slip away and he would get alone and he would spend time with the Father. He would get alone with God 
and he would build now this personal history with God. And it says when he came out of that, he goes and forgives a a paralytic man. They raise him down the roof and he says, your sins are forgiven. Get up and be healed. And that happens after he spent time with his father. When you get alone with God, things happen. Luke chapter 6, we're going chapter by chapter. Luke chapter 6 verse 12, it says, It was at this time that he, being Jesus, went off to the mountain to pray and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Oh my goodness. We go for six minutes. He went for six hours during the night. He prayed all night. And you know what's funny? He comes down from the mountain. First thing he does, he goes and picks his 12 disciples. I'm sure the Father spoke to him in some way, shape or form and let him know, hey, it's time to build your team. But the purpose that I'm looking at this scripture is that we see that man, every time he gets alone with God, something shifts, something happens. He is receiving something, he's giving something. But Jesus, he's our example and he gets alone with God. Luke chapter 9, two more left. And it happened that while he was praying alone, the disciples were with him and he questioned them saying, who do the people say that I am? I love this one. Now he's alone, but he lets the disciples in on his time with the Lord. So special. And they come in and this is where he asks, who do you say I am? And this is where Peter confesses that you are Christ the Lord. And Jesus says, the Father's revealed this to you, Peter. And I believe he revealed it to Peter because Peter was also alone with Jesus. When we get alone, things happen. When we get alone, that's actually how we're designed to connect with God, to then go and connect with other people. The last one I want to show you, Luke chapter 11, verse 1. It happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. Yeah, it says that that he was praying. They obviously can hear him praying. They can see him praying. And they say, when he comes back, they're like, Jesus, you know how John taught his disciples? Well, can you maybe teach us how you pray? They would have seen this modeled in front of them day by day. He would withdraw. Yeah, he would just disappear. I'm, I'm sure they woke up in the morning, breakfast in bed. Jesus is gone. Where is Jesus? Oh, he's alone. He's up the mountain. Uh, When it's time uh, maybe to start the day, where's Jesus early in the morning? Oh, he's gone. He's away. At night, you wake up to go get a glass of milk. I'm not sure if they've got milk in this part of the world in this time. But They get up for whatever they're waking up for and Jesus isn't there because he's often withdrawing and getting alone with God. Jesus is our example, guys. If you're watching and you say you confess to be a follower of Jesus, I want to challenge you and I want to encourage you this morning that you are being called to get alone with God. He's our example. And as I read these, I I, I don't know about you, but I'm being challenged even again this morning. I don't claim to have this down pat. I don't claim to be some guru uh, about getting alone with God. I'm still learning in this and I'm growing just like you. But this has got to do something to us. If we say we follow Jesus, but that we don't spend time alone with God, who are we kidding ourselves? If there was anyone... Yeah, let's think about it. If there was anyone who didn't have to pray, if there was anyone who didn't actually have to make time alone and set that time alone to be with God, it's probably Jesus, true? He is God. But yet God himself showed us what it looks like to pray, what it looks like to now get quiet, to get alone, to get to a place of solitude and seek God. It challenges me deeply. And I think this morning, I just want you to rethink your prayer life. I want you to rethink this morning what getting alone with God looks like for you because we can make every excuse in the book or we can justify it for this and that, but God has something for you, church. I want to encourage that God is actually waiting for you to get alone with Him so He can download to you direction. He can download to you all the things He wants you to do. And I want to ask you this question this morning. This is one that I ask often. I'll ask it again. Is prayer your steering wheel or is it your spare tire? Is prayer your steering wheel that directs and guides your decisions or is prayer just simply your back tire that you only go to when you're in trouble, that you only go to when you find yourself in a hard situation? Because I believe prayer is so much more than just calling out to God when we need saving. Yes, He saves us. Yes, He's merciful. And this morning, if you're in trouble and you need to call out to God, call out to Him and He's going to reach you. He's going to meet you. But my goodness, church, Prayer that I see Jesus doing. He's not going to be alone to be saved. He's going to be alone to stay strong. He's going to be alone with his Father to just love on him, to receive of him, to be with him. This is a son being with the Father, just simply to be with him. Let me tell you this, church, sons and daughters, you can be alone with your Father. He longs for you. We sung it this morning. He is for you. He is for you. And I believe a personal history with God is something that is priceless. And it must be developed and protected at any cost. 
your own time with the Lord must be something that you protect, church. It must be something that you develop it and you cultivate it. And yeah, maybe you forget. Yeah, maybe you haven't prayed as, as well as you could have, but don't stop. Don't let it just die like that. We've got to keep it flowing. We've got to keep our relationship with God alive and active, just like we would a friend, a family member, because God, yeah, He's waiting for us to come alone with Him. And when we get alone with Him, just like David did, just like Jesus did, I believe we're going to stay strong as we get alone with Him. Amen? So turn to someone who, in the chat <laughs> and let them know, get alone with God. Come on. We want to get alone with God. And so many things happen when we get alone with God. I've got a few to share, but this one, I'm going to start with this one in particular. When you get alone with God, yeah, He gives you direction. And I believe He gives you the answers before the problems can come. I truly believe that. Proverbs 3 verse 6 says this, Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He will direct your path. If you acknowledge Him, you lift Him up in all your ways. Say, Father, what do I do in this situation? God, what do I do in this employment time? What do I do in this relationship? He will direct your ways. And I'm a big believer that He gives you the answer before the problem. And in one story in particular, I was um, really excited for the birth of our son. Um, where I was heading in actually to a time of really focused prayer and fasting. And I was in this whole time with the Lord. And on day, it was day 10. And on this day, I remember the Lord saying to me, do you trust me? And I was like, uh-oh, that's, that's, what's that mean? Do you trust me? If my wife says, do you trust me? I'm like, no, what have you done? So I felt like God was saying, do you trust me? And I'm like, my brain's like, yes. My heart's like, yes. And my mouth's like, yeah, I trust you. And anyway, I started writing in my notes, do I trust God, question mark, and I'm thinking about it all day. Um, and I just felt like he wanted me to think about that. Do I trust him? And anyway, it gets to the day, um, my son was seven days late. So on the seventh day, we're like, yes, Isaiah is coming to the world. And he comes out in the world. And while um, my wife was giving birth, there were some complications. And, and uh, someone ran out to me and says, look, something's happening. Um, he's got stuck and he's come out now. He's not breathing. So, and I'm hearing code red. Code blue, like every nurse in the whole thing ran into our room. I knew what room we were in, and I'm like, oh, that's my room. And I'll go to go in there. I go in the doors. There's people all over my son. They're trying to get him to breathe. People with my wife, and they kick me out. So I get pushed out. And the person that I was with um, was actually my beautiful sister. And, um, and, and she's, she's been in the room. She comes out flustered. She's like, we've got to pray. We've got to pray. Come on, let's pray. And as she said that, I heard the voice, do you trust me? And I was like, in that moment, I said to her, you can pray if you want, but I'm not praying. We don't need to pray. And I don't know if she thought I was just crazy or I was like just overwhelmed. But I said, Joe, you pray if you need to, but I don't need to pray because I already had my word before that situation. And in that moment, it's just another example of how blessed I am to know that I can go to my father. I can speak with him. And as I acknowledge him in all my ways, he gives me direction for all my paths. This morning, church, when you get alone, he's going to give you direction. He's going to bless you. And that's just one of so many different stories I could share with you that when we get alone, yeah, things shift and we are the benefactors when we get alone with him. He does so many things for us. But one thing I want to also say is that when you get alone, yeah, things become yours. Yeah, how many times have we heard that you're blessed and there's promises for you and there's all this potential and it's so true. But yeah, you can have things in your account. You can have money in your account, but yet it's not in your pocket. Yeah, we all get that. Your bank account right now is probably not carrying that in cash. If you did, well, I want to sit next to you. But yeah, most of the time, what's in our account and what's in our pocket is different. And I believe we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That's in our account. But that's not necessarily what I'm walking with today. What I'm walking with is what I've acquired in faith, what I've, what I've trusted God for, what I've said yes to in obedience. And I believe when you and I get alone with God, whatever I believe for becomes mine. It just goes cha-ching into my account, into my hand, into my disposal when I get alone with God. Is that making sense, church? When you get alone with God, the concepts that you know become convictions. He writes them on your heart. When you get alone with God, the, 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 the theories that you have become your realities. When you get alone with God, all the stuff that you've heard and heard and heard, now God can carve it and write it on your heart. You've got to get alone, but when you get alone, that's when that can happen. If you just hear week after week, message after message, you'll be inspired. You'll be stirred. But you know what? You might not actually see Jesus yourself. Yeah, this great story in Luke 24. It says that Jesus is teaching and he's talking about himself to these two guys on the road of Emmaus. And it says that as he spoke, their hearts were stirred. But then it's the next day when they're sitting with Jesus and they're eating, taking communion. It says that their eyes were open and they saw him for who he was. 
And you know what? We can hear message after message about Jesus. Our hearts can be stirred. But until we stop, we sit down with Jesus, that's when we'll actually see him. We have to stop, get alone, and look at him in the face. And as we do that, that's when Jesus, that's when the aha moment comes. That's when the penny drops. That's when the light bulb moment happens, when we get alone with God. I hope you're hearing me this morning. And one of my favorite things that happens is that when we get alone with God and we see Jesus, we are fully transformed. This morning, I want you to know, if you are looking for transformation, then get alone with God. Just look at Jesus. Just when I say look at Jesus, just think about God. And as you see Him, as you behold Him, you're going to become just like Him. I'll say it again. When you see Him and you behold Him, you're going to become just like Him. This is what happens when we get alone with God. And maybe you're hearing this and you're like, yes. Yes, yes, I want that. But tomorrow morning is going to be the test. And I think, I was thinking about it. Why don't we do this? And even myself, I know this and I'm teaching this, but there has been times, especially in the past, where, man, I knew about prayer. I could tell you all the verses about prayer. And I could even get up here and do something, some cool speech about prayer, but I wasn't practicing it. And I think prayer is one of those things. We talk about it so much, but we practice it. Yeah, not enough. Uh, I want to encourage you and challenge you. Think about what's stopping you from getting alone. And whatever that thing is, it's got to go. Whatever um, is, is holding you back from getting alone with your father, you've got to remove it. Not because you have to or because God's going to love you if, you if you do that. No, no, He already loves you and He is for you. And because He's for you, now I hope you're encouraged to get alone with God. But some things I thought about, why don't we spend time with God? Most of the time, we're just too busy. We've got too much going on. And I hope COVID-19 is showing you how we need to cut some things back. We need to say no to Netflix. We need to say no to that extra sleep. It's going to cost us, but we get up early. We go to bed late because we're going to get alone with God. We can't be too busy that we don't have time for God. That is not a legitimate excuse that we are too busy to spend time with our Father. And this is something that I'm talking to myself right now. I don't want to get to, 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 to spend time with the Father. And, and I'm like, oh, hey, God. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm so glad to see you, son. And I'm like, yeah, I haven't been here for a few years. No, no, I don't want that to happen. I believe God in every moment of every day is waiting for us and He wants to embrace us and He wants to speak to us. I think so many times we don't spend time in prayer. You know why? Because we think we got it all down pat. We think we got this. We think this is easy. And we don't, we, in, our, in our prayerlessness, you know what we're saying to God? We're saying, I don't need you. We sing, I need you. I sing, I surrender to you, but when I live a prayerless life, my actions say, I don't need you. That's the truth, and I've lived that for so long. I say, God, I want you, I need you, but then I don't pray, I don't pursue Him. What am I saying? I'm saying I don't need you. But you know what we declare in our prayer life? When we pray, we're declaring, God, I need you. I'm not independent of you. I am dependent on you. Prayer is actually something powerful that we declare to God. Some of us, we don't pray simply because we don't even know how. Or we don't, we don't feel equipped, but I'm hoping by the end of this, I'll be able to give you some quick tools. But another huge one, and I just want to talk into this for a moment. So many of us don't pray because we've got the wrong beliefs. We believe we're unworthy. We believe we're just a stuffer. We believe that we're too far gone. We believe that we're too damaged, that God would want to speak to us, that maybe we can even qualify to hear His voice. I want to speak in, to you in this moment. If you think that you're unworthy, if you think you don't qualify, to hear from God, you're wrong. Because Jesus became a man just like you and just like me. And He lived a life that we could never live perfect. And He was worthy so that now un our unworthiness can be traded for His. And His righteousness, His right standing before God can now be exchanged for un our worthiness. And now we can be in a position where we can stand before God holy, accepted, complete, righteous, in His eyes. That is how God sees you. And that is available for anyone who says yes to Jesus. And I want to tell you that because Jesus was a man, because He became just like us, you know, He experienced pain. He experienced the trouble. He experienced backstabbing. The Bible says that on the night that He was betrayed, that's right, Jesus was betrayed. On the night He was betrayed, what did He do? He went alone to the garden. Yeah? Jesus shows us, He's our example, that when you get betrayed, when you're hurting, when, when you're in a moment where 
you just feel like you're in conflict, don't disconnect from God. Take your pain. Take that discouragement. Take that betrayal. Take whatever you've got going on and you take it to the Father. You get alone with God and say, God, I can't do this. I need help. But no, you know what? Your grace is sufficient for me. When you get alone with God, you don't have to pretend that everything's okay. Go with, with who you are. Be real with God and watch Him refresh you. Watch Him transform you. Watch Him direct you and watch Him just feed you. Do you understand that when you get alone with God, He's not looking for perfection. He's just looking for your presence. He just wants to be with you. He just wants to be with you. He, he just wants to hear you. He wants to hold your hand. He wants to wipe your tear. He wants to strengthen you. Sometimes He wants to slap you a little bit and say, come on, stop complaining. Let's move forward. There's a mission. There's things to do. There's people to save. But you know, if we're not alone with God, we're going to miss all that. And we'll get offended. We'll get bitter. And we waste months without spending time with Him or helping people because we just we, we, we feel like our mess is too big for God. No way. No mess is too big. No, no hole is too deep. There's no problem, no situation, no circumstance that can stop us yeah, from having access to God's presence because we can come in whatever state we are and the blood of Jesus says, yes, you can come. The blood of Jesus says, yes, you are welcome. And this morning, I hope you're hearing me that Jesus is the one, that He tore down that wall of separation so that we can come into the presence of God, that we can be with Him. And how can we do this? Yeah, in finishing this message, how can we be alone with God? Matthew 6, verse 6, real simple. It says this, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward, will reward you openly. This tells me that the Father is already waiting for you. He's in the secret place right now. And He's waiting. And He's like, are they coming? When are they coming? I can't wait. I hope they come today. I hope I get to see their face. I hope I get to tell them this. I want to tell them how much I love them. I want to speak into them. I want to direct them. He's waiting for you and for me, friend. And all we need to do is take some time, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. You want to give more than that, you give more than that. But I believe there's something special when we get alone with God. And if we want to stay strong, In every situation, when things are going great, when things aren't going too well, if we get alone with God, that's when we can stay strong. This is a tool that is that every other tool is hinged upon. You can be like, when are you going to be thankful if you're not alone with God? When are you going to be able to ask, what would Jesus do if you don't know how to be alone with God? When are you going to be able to guard your heart if you can't be alone with God? It all starts and finishes with getting alone with God. I know so many people are going to get alone this week. And even right now, I just want to leave and just start praying again. But I just want you to know, maybe you've had negative experiences. Maybe you feel like, I don't hear anything. Hey, that's okay. The whole purpose is not based on what you feel. It's based on what you know. And the Bible says that if we call after Him, He hears us. The Bible says, the Word of God says that if we seek Him, we'll find Him. If we ask, we'll receive. If we knock, the door will open. Keep asking. Keep just being real with God. I know He's listening And I know He's with you. And I think the best thing about prayer is not even the answer to my prayer. It's the fact that He hears me. It's the fact that I get to talk to the Creator of the universe. And the Creator of the universe who made all the stars, who who laid down all, all the valleys and lifted up all the mountains is hearing me and He wants to see my face. He wants my presence in His presence. I think that's beautiful, church. And this morning, I want you to know that He is for you and He wants to speak to you. And over the last few, I guess, years, I've just started this and I'm not a pro at this, but one part of prayer, I mean, when you get alone with God, you can read the Scriptures, you can sing. And I, I, thanks, I thank God, like I shared a few weeks ago. I start by thanking Him. I start by for what He's done. Then I start praising Him for who He is. And then I get into a time where I just get still. And just as I finish, I want to encourage you. Maybe you've been praying to God a lot. Yeah, you've been praying to Him and you've been talking to Him. I hate that kind of prayer. I did that for years. And that's why my my time with God was so dead and dry because all I did was yap and yap and talk to God. That is not what I'm talking about this morning. I'm not talking about praying to God. I'm talking about praying with God. I'm talking about partnership. I'm talking about you and God praying together, talking together, conversing together. You take your, your mess and you say, God, what do I do with this? And He answers, this is what you do, son. This is what you do, daughter. That's the kind of prayer life I'm talking about. This, I believe, is what Jesus had with the Father. And just as He had, we can have. We can have exactly what Jesus had. But this form of being still, it comes from a verse in Psalm 46, verse 10. And this is a famous verse. This is what it says. It says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. And this word, be still, it means rapha. And the word means to slacken. Yeah? 
This word means to slacken. It means to cease. It means to stop. It means to be weak. This word, be still. And the word know, it says, be still and know that I am the Lord. The word know is yada in Hebrew. It's a real personal word. It means like intercourse. It means deep intimacy. So this verse tells me that if I rafa, then I will yada God. If I slacken and cease from all the striving and all the working, that I'll actually encounter God in a special way. And I want to show you this example. Imagine that this, this, uh, this strap here represents your life and my life. We go through life. We go through so many things. And life can stretch us sometimes. And you, you find out you just got unemployed maybe. You find out that your hours just got cut. You find out that there's a whole nother week uh, of homeschooling. And you're like, uh-oh. Um, you find out that, you know, your husband forgot to do something you asked him to do. I know I do that. I make my wife go, whoop. And life can stretch us and stretch us to the point where like this. But if we know how to cultivate getting alone with God, the Bible says, if I get still, I quiet my spirit and I just look to Jesus. I literally just picture Jesus on the throne and I say, I worship you, Jesus. And as I worship Jesus, what happens? I slacken. When I get still and I stop striving and struggling and naming and claiming, I just be still with God. I slacken and my heart is now refreshed and I yard at God. I actually can know God. And you know what? It's so funny. So many times we wake up Sunday morning, just like last week, we wake up in the morning and things are good and we're trying to get the kids ready and I'm thinking, all right, I've got to get on the live chat. Then, then my daughter's done a massive thing in her nappy and it's making a mess and, and then Grace is like, can you help me? And I can't help her and there's a little bit of tension there and, and then by the time I get to communion, I don't even have my communion ready and I'm starting to stress and, and the, the music's on, I'm in church, but I'm turning and I'm getting more and more stress. And in those moments, I just got to be like, Lord, I worship you. I give my attention to Him. I give my focus to Him. And what happens? I gradually slacken. I stop working. I stop striving. And I get the peace. I get the joy. I get everything that God's designed me to have. But it only happens when I get still. I want to encourage you. Maybe your prayer life is a lot of you praying and naming. You're probably going to end up getting just as much stress after you spend time with the Lord than you did going into it. I'd suggest to you spend some time quietening your soul. Stop talking and just start listening. Letting God speak to you. Letting Him just be with you. Because I believe that's what God's calling us to, church. I believe He wants us to be a people who can get alone with Him, who can slacken, who can slow down and just let life go on, knowing that he, He's got this, He's in charge and He's going to help us. And especially in this season, as I finish, uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 15 says something very specific. And I'm going to finish on this and I hope this speaks to you. This is Jesus with His disciples and Key note, yeah, we're thinking about getting alone with God here. And it says, And he went up on the mountain and called to him those himself wanted. This is Jesus calling to him those he wanted. And they came to him. And he appointed 12 that they might what? Be with him. And that he might send them out to preach, to have power, to heal sicknesses, and to cast out demons. The first thing that he did, it says that he called them. And it didn't say He called them to go and preach. He didn't call them to go and heal. He didn't call them to go and do or to strive or to work. He called them just to be with Him. He called the disciples up on the mountain, not to strategize and plan, but simply to be with Him. And it says that they were with Him. And as they were with Him, then they went from Him. Do you know what? If we want to be the people God's called us to be, if we want to be the mums that we need to be in this season, if we want to be the dads, if we want to be the businessmen, if we want to be the youth, come on youth, if we want to be the youth that God's calling us to be, it happens and it starts with us being with Jesus. Not with us trying to strategize and come up with plans. We just got to slow things down, spend time with God. Yeah, a few minutes a day. That changes everything. I believe that God is calling us for this week. Part four of this series is to strengthen ourselves through slowing down yeah, and spending time with God, creating a personal history with God. And I want to encourage you that you can do it. So maybe your next step for this week is to put some time aside. I've been practicing this and I'm in a bit of a routine now, but put some time aside, get alone with God and slow down, slacken, be still and know that I am God. And whatever you have to do to, to make that happen, make it happen. Go to bed early. Yeah, wake up earlier. It's going to cost you some sleep, whatever it's going to cost you. But as followers of Jesus, Jesus made, um, made it His aim, made it His practice to get alone. Who am I? Who are you to not get alone? Yeah, and still yet want to stay strong. Come on, we can stay strong as we get alone with God. And maybe you're listening to this and you don't know God and maybe you have no concept of prayer. I want to encourage you that you can pray and you can hear God's voice and you can practice everything that I've shared tonight. But it all starts with one man and one name. And His name is Jesus. 
And if you've never received Jesus, I just want you to pray with me. And I'm not even going to say a prayer this week. I just want you to pray right now. I want you to say something like this. Yeah? If you want to receive Jesus, you want to encounter God right now, just say something like this. God, I need you. I want you in my life. Just tell God right now where you're at home. Just tell Him that you need Him. Tell Him that you, that you want to seek Him. Tell Him that you want to hear His voice right now. That's right. Just tell Him, God, I need you in this moment. I believe. Tell Him that you believe that He died for you, that He rose for you to give you life, and that you are going to follow Him, that you're going to choose to make space and get alone with Him. Amen. 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 If, if you just accepted Jesus, if you just said that prayer, I want to congratulate you that that is the best decision of your life, that we are so passionate about wanting to help you now take your next step with God, because I believe you're on a journey and it's just started and it's going to get a whole lot better. So just, I want to encourage you to let us know um, your decision today. We want to hear your story. So please go to our website, innerlife.org.au and hit the contact us button. There's a link there and let us know that you said yes to Jesus. Let us know if you have any questions because honestly, what you've just done today is amazing. I encourage you, tell somebody, send someone a text in your phone book. Let us know because we believe what you've done today is the beginning of the rest of your journey with God. It's so powerful and maybe um, you want to continue to find out more about us. You want to join a group Whatever you need to know, go to our website. We're going to be here. But I just want to let you know that God is calling you to get alone with Him, that God wants to call you to be His son, to be His daughter. So God bless. I'll see you next week at 10.30 a.m. on YouTube, on Facebook. God bless, and I'll see you there.